Part one, white clouds, guardian moon, where the goddess dwells. Long ago, the guardian Saros made an appearance during this moon. She had been summoned by the goddess, whose soul was suffering as the flames of war raged across Fodlan. Some believe that high in the sky above Saros, the Immaculate Ones, mighty wings are what powered the strong winds carrying the Guardian and her forces into battle. Annette would like to speak with you. Is now a good time. Yeah. Welcome back, one and all, to Fire Emblem Three Houses. I am the Dark Seraph. Last time, Gerald got stabbed in the fucking back by Monica. And not even the tans of time were enough to stop it. God damn. I'm so sorry, Professor. I somehow overslept and missed our training session. I didn't mean to cause you and the others so much trouble. Imagine if that had happened during one of our missions. It really is inexcusable. Don't worry about it. It's just, when I'm studying tactics, I lose track of time and... Oh, who am I kidding? I've always been like this. Before I came to the Officer's Academy, I was a student at the School of Sorcery in Ferdiad. Even back then, I was pulling all-nighters well before the exams. Yeah, that's not healthy. And I never even noticed I was harming myself. I'm just too focused on my goal. I know I've already told you this, but I really love to learn new things. It's a passion of sorts. I first realized I had the learning bug when I was about four or five years old. My father was so happy to see me using magic. Seeing him happy made me happy too. And that made me want to work even harder. If only things could have stayed like that. What do you mean? When I was about 13, my father left home. He was a devout man, so I figured he'd gone to the monastery. That's why I went to the School of Sorcery, so that I could eventually get accepted at the Officer's Academy. I studied harder than ever, and sure enough, I finally earned a referral. Unfortunately, my passion for learning became more of an obsession. I got so focused, I kind of forgot how to relax. Feels like I've been running in circles ever since. Rest is just as important as work. That's true. Just look at today. If my hard work stops me from working hard, what good is it? Okay, it's decided. From now on, I'll try my best not to try my best. Um, that's confusing. That's not what I was getting at. You should try your best, but you shouldn't overwork yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. All I meant is that I'll try... I mean, I'll slow down a bit. From now on, if you see me going overboard, just let me know. I'm a new woman after all. Okay. What are you doing at this hour? Oh, I know. You are eavesdropping. I must admit that I approve. <laughs> She's very childlike. Professor, we must remain quiet. I see. The Flame Emperor and Monica. And the mage who rescued Monica. What is that guy's name? I don't know. But if we keep listening, we might be able to find out. If that was not the time for revenge. I act now, they will get away. An unexpected chance to hear their plans. Patience, patience. Time and place. Oh, thank you. You saved me. If you were to die, then the mystery of our bodies would be revealed. 
Preventing that was my only aim. I'm afraid you must remain, Kronya. There is something I need you to Kronya. do. Kronya? Oh, of course. I am always happy to cooperate with Solon. Leave it to me. How annoying. Flame Emperor, is she offending you? Dallas. Unfortunately, we Thalus. cannot take our eyes off her, so there is nothing to be done. You are yeah, our Thalus. greatest creation. We use the defiled beast's blood as the fuel to your flame, that you may burn even the gods. Are they even human? Now is the time to cleanse Fodlin with that power and bring forth our salvation. There will be no salvation for you and your kind. Those responsible for such gruesome deeds in Dusker and Enmar. All so that you may acquire the strength you need. All for a purpose. Their eyes. I've got you. Finally. Wait. If we don't act now, we'll miss our chance. I agree on some levels. <laughs> Even if someone has overheard us, there is nothing they can do. There have always been rats in the walls, and there always will be. No. The dagger. What about the dagger? It... No, never mind. It couldn't possibly be so. Is that the blade you gave Edelgard? Professor, those are the ones we must destroy. They're the bastards who killed my family and Gerald. I think this is the first time that Fire Emblem has ever flat out called people a bastard. Usually, it's dastard with a D, as in a vile and despicable person, not a bastard as in an abhorrent person or illegitimate child. This game's getting pretty heavy. For now, let's return to the monastery and regroup. As for the Flame Emperor's dagger, I'll hold on to it for the time being. It's Ingrid's birthday. Let's have a tea party for one of my party members. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> what a nice aroma. I really enjoy this tea. Thank you. Quite delicious. She seems to be a very studious person. Yes. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> Yes. A place you'd like to visit. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Uh, the last battle. Wow. It's a this, bit hot. This weird dating simulator thing really it's isn't my around thing. It's the monastery, and the soil is rich. Honestly, I'm envious. It sounds like a nice place to visit. I don't know if I would want to live at a monastery. Are you sure? Well, Thank you for the treat. Uh... Let's just rest for now. And that gets my Sword of the Creator up. Let's give people some instruction. Everyone's ready and raring to go. Annette, you need to get that sword skill up. Yes. <laughs> 
up to D plus. We're getting you there. You want to become a bishop. You want to. You still want to be that a wyvern knight. I just need to get you more levels for that. Lead like a lord. Sword. That was helpful. And f flag. Oh. Thanks. Oh. That. I should give you some blades. You're not just good at the lance. You're good with a sword too. I need to remember that. To do, you're still looking to become a. Well, sure. Let's get Magic and faith. Are you serious? B plus. Faith level four. One more. You're looking to become a bishop, so more faith. No need to... I would like... Oh. Uh, group tasks. Let's mix it up a little bit. Stable duty for... Sylvain and Ingrid. Begin lecture. I'd like you to explain something. What is it? Though I have served His Highness for four years, he has eluded my every attempt to learn his favorite foods. Sounds like something to resort to trial and error. I don't think you understand the situation. Sorry. You could just talk to him, you know. Uh, Dimitri would like to have a speak with me. Yes. Thank you for your help the other day, Professor. Please. Allow me to express my gratitude by taking you to dinner. Okay. I'd be delighted. Fantastic. But please think about what you'd like to eat. After all, such magnificent guidance must work up quite an appetite. I've studied swordsmanship for some time, but your mercenary skills are something else entirely. Speaking of which, there's another question I must ask you. Were you reconciled with the reality of battle from your first foray? With the killing part, I mean? I haven't had the luxury of questioning it. Questioning it. I see. And you? No. I do not carry that burden well. I doubt that will change, no matter how many years come and go. The first time I led on the battlefield, I was sent to quell a rebellion in the West. It was not a difficult fight. The enemy was not well trained and their morale was low. A swing of the lance and your opponent falls. A flash of your blade and a path opens up. That's the sort of battle it was. Easy, right? What caused this rebellion? The noble family from that area sought to seize the throne after my father's untimely death. The leader of the rebel army was defeated and the rebellion quelled. This was at the height of the post-war period. I recall coming across a dead soldier's body. He was clutching a locket. Inside was a lock of golden hair. I don't know to whom it belonged. His wife? His daughter? Mother? Lover? I'll never know. He was a soldier. An enemy. Someone we had cut down without hesitation. But in that moment, I realized he was also a real person, just like the rest of us. Of course, 
We cannot stand idly by and allow anyone to commit senseless acts of violence. Yet, in dispensing what we call justice, we take the lives of cherished family members, beloved friends. Killing is part of the job, but even so, there are times when I'm chilled to the bone by the depravity of my own actions. It's normal to feel that way. Is it? Perhaps you're right. I pray that you are. Professor, may I speak freely? When we first met, I thought of you as someone who felt no strong feelings about killing your enemies. I could never trust someone who kills without batting an eye. My heart won't allow it. But after speaking with you and getting to know you better, I can see you're not like that. Now I know, with all my heart, that I can trust you. Thank you for that. I'm now to B support with Dimitri. Ugh, I'm with Ingrid? I'm not gonna get away with anything. Stop messing around and get moving. You don't work, you don't eat. Fine, fine. Let's do this. Hey, we did pretty well. All because I really went for it, of course. You're a glib one, aren't you, Sylvain? I did the bulk of the work here, you know. Well, you two did well together. We have a paralog. Singing in tune with others proved quite difficult. Singing is so much fun. Everyone should enjoy themselves while they're doing it. It's Rhea's birthday. Some bandits. This doesn't seem like much of anything. There's no important story quests. But it is some combat, it is some battle, it's some good gameplay. Let's have at it. Battles in the desert. Actually, you might make good use of that sickle. What should I do? I'll go. Here goes. I'm not gonna lose. Go! Oh, thank goodness. I'm counting on you. 
Nothing better than a well-timed crit. Ready. Let us away. Here we go. I'll cut through. Stay focused. Yeah. Too slow. Yeah. Nice try. Try next on for size. Yeah. Seems I prevail. Excellent crit. Too slow. Oh, there are beasts here. <coughs> I did what I had to. Well, there's a beast here anyway. I will get Time to end this. Kill this thing. But it's not going down without a fight. prevailed.
You gained a little more mobility when dismounting. I wanted to kill that bird, by the way. I am spent. Yeah. Let's keep our guard up. Continues. Luck wasn't with you. I will handle whatever comes. A lot of money for that. I'll do manual instruction. Thanks. This will be. That was.
That was... Let's go visit Ingrid. Ugh. Will father never learn? All of these useless letters are only creating more rubbish in the world. Professor? Oh, I didn't see you standing there. My apologies. Was that a letter you were disposing of? Oh, uh, that paper. Well, I... Yes. Yes, it was. It was a letter from my father. Are you sure you want to throw that away? I understand where you're coming from here, but I have no need of such things. It isn't like anything of importance was written on it. Curious? I suppose there's no harm in allowing you to read it. Go on then. My dearest daughter, Ingrid. Are you well? I trust that you are behaving yourself and refraining from causing trouble for others. Things on the home front are in order. The marriage proposal for you and the Viscount's son should be prepared soon. Although, I am quite certain there are many superior candidates at Garrig Mock Monastery. As you know, the very survival of our family is dependent upon whom you marry. You are the only one left in the family who can make things right. We are all counting on you. Do not lose sight of what truly matters. A letter about marriage prospects? Yes. Perhaps you found it somewhat entertaining. I've told you that we've never been very well off financially. My noble family, House Galatea, branched off from House Daphnel in the Alliance. Shortly after, we were lucky enough to receive the support of the royal family, allowing us to attain nobility, to some extent. But the territory we watch over is poor. It's harvest meager. And our noble blood, too, has grown thin. Neither my father nor my brothers bear a crest. I, however, do bear a crest. Because of this, my father sees me as our family's one hope for the future. A crest is highly prized among nobles. Were I to marry into a greater noble family, that financial support could soothe our woes. I can't believe he would use you like that. Thank you, Professor. Your sentiment alone is a great comfort to me. Despite my own feelings, I understand his approach to all this. It isn't that he doesn't care for me. I understand it very, very well. Which is why I... I apologize, Professor. I must be going. Ciro would like to speak with you. Uh, okay. Aha! Found ya! What's up, kid? You're always nosing around places, aren't you, Professor? Can be real hard to find you sometimes. Is something the matter? Well, yeah. I wouldn't have been running all over the place looking for you if stuff was normal. Do you remember how Lady Rhea asked you to come to the office this evening? Well, she told me that I should come to let you know that today's a bad day for doing that, and you should go and see her tomorrow instead. Oh, that's, that's pretty much everything a I good thing to, to say, tell me. Oh, except to ask you if you've seen Sedith around anywhere. I haven't, sorry. Okay, I'm supposed to tell Sedith the thing Lady Rhea told me to tell you, but he's hard to find. I like the fact that when they're in the monastery, they're just in normal clothing or their school uniforms. 
but when they're in the field of battle, they actually don armor and equipment. That's a nice detail. Want me to tell him for you? Nah, I'll find him myself. But if you see him, then find me, please, and tell me where you saw him, okay? Because then I'll know where he is. I'll be in the stables if you need me. Gotta put out the fodder before it's the next kid's shift. Don't want her thinking I left my work for her to do. Oh, but if I'm not in the stables and you need to find me, I'll be at the forest up north because there's a bunch of logs lying around up there. I figure I ought to chop them up or else someone might trip on a log or we might run out of firewood. And if I chop, then it'll save other people time. If it looks like I'm done there, then the quarters need to be sweeped. So if you see Sedith and you need to find me, then I might be there. Can I help you with anything? Sounds like you're nope, busy. This is my job. I'm not giving it to anyone else because it's mine and I'm gonna do it. Besides, if you help me out, Lady Rhea might give me an earful. I don't know why, but Lady Rhea sure does seem to like you. She's always worried about what you might be doing or not doing. Is that so? Oh yeah, not that it's any of my business. Anyways, Lady Rhea asked me to do some jobs, so I'm doing them all. Even some she didn't ask for, but I know need doing. So I'm doing them. End of story. You're a real gung-ho, get it done kind of guy. And remember, if you see Sadith around, come find me and tell me where you saw him, yeah? Seems like it'll be tough to find you. Huh? But I just told you where I'd be. If I'm not in the stables, I'll be at the forest. If I'm not, oh, I see. You're right, I'm all over the place, huh? I don't want to waste your time, Professor, so if you see Sedith, how about you tell him I was looking for him, and then tell him all the places I'll be? Then he can spend his time looking for me instead of you. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. A real good plan. Let's do that. See you later, Professor. Uh, kid? There are so many. Is it possible to finish in a single day? I'm not sure, but even if we don't finish, it probably won't be much of a problem. Same old mercy. Well, let's do this. Professor, we finished up quickly this time. I think we've got some decent results. Right. If we can maintain the same pace next time, well, it'll probably still be unpleasant. Mercedes went up to B plus in magic. That worked out well. <laughs> I'm a natural. I'll go a little longer, why not? And yeah, so this just hangs out in my room. Must weep? Then weep. I shall be here for you. Thank you. Well, it would be ridiculous to not feel anything after something like that. Go on and let it out. I am here. Interesting. Thank you. 
Big ol' gar. Captain no. Gerald's gone. He's gone. And we'd only just reunited. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure this is even harder on you. But I just can't... I can't believe... Uh, would you come to my house? Hey, I hope we get a chance to practice together. I know I'm in a different class, but you're the only other person... Strength and Lance. Okay. Hello there. to Gerald. It's terrible. If there's anything I can do, simply we can't let them get away with it. What happened to Gerald? There's we can't I cannot recruit house leaders. That's interesting. Something wrong? You're eating like you hate the food. Oh? That was not my intention, but I apologize if I hurt your feelings. Okay, Dimitri's not one for a steak, it seems. Oh, somebody here has a quest I've actually fulfilled. Professor, I'm sure you will pull through this because you're so strong, Professor. Best to stay calm. We don't know the nature of our enemies. If we underestimate them, anything could happen. Yes, I agree. Yes? I'm actually very busy right now. Magic and faith, okay. Gerald's soul. There's not much else I can do. Oh, Professor, excuse me. There is no one here who has not heard tales of Gerald's valor. We have suffered a most dear loss. I do not know what the enemy's aim was, but I do know this. After what they have done, we cannot suffer them to live. If there is anything I can... 
Why, it would seem that your reputation is on the rise. It's a shame I am not in your class. Charm and reason. You're a strange one. Oh, there's Claude. Teach. I haven't lost a parent yet, so I can't even begin to understand how you must be feeling. But even while you're standing still, the world keeps on moving. I always find that oddly comforting. Hmm. I want to find the shut-in girl. I can't. I can never actually say her name. Do you have time for a request? I need a favor. Oh, she's just outside, okay. Outside to the north. Oh, some support conversations. I'll do that in a minute. There she is. Professor, I, um, I brought some flowers for Gerald. Thank you. It's the least I can do. Sometimes I feel like all I do is run away. Anyway, I'll go lay them out. Wow, thank you so much! Um, hi. Sorry, I'm trying. Strength and bow, okay. I won't bother you. It's about the weapon that killed Geralt. Will you listen? It was a dagger, but I know enough to know it wasn't an ordinary dagger. It wasn't made of iron or steel because, well, because whatever it was, the wound it left wasn't normal. Who could make a blade like that, do you figure? Professor, you want me to help out with your- You just say the word, and I'll help. Don't worry about it. It's only natural for- Okay, I got you in my group now. That's nice. You've lost someone that Manuela and I can- We can't do all- I've always- You're a very- Bow, magic, and writing. I still have much to learn.
That was tough. No, it wasn't. This should prove interesting. I cannot lose. Doing my part. I feel really sorry for her. myself and here we have the final one Leone I hope it's the final one anyway I can't lose you could have opened with that ash feel myself Oh, and now this will be the final one, I guarantee, because it's Quad. Another dodge would be great. Didn't think so. I'm glad I asked you. Yeah, Claude would have been the last one. Look for Gerald's belongings in his quarters. I'm not even close to being strong. I mean, Gerald was so that's enough. Whatever happens. Hey, Professor. No? Strength and brawl. How about you, you good guy? Keep yourself back. That's how I got through. If you need help with anything. Good to see you, Professor. I was just on my way to train, so. Strength and heavy armor. Okay. Let's go into the supports. Oh, I've got quite a few. Hi, Dudu. I wanted to thank you again for helping me out the other day. Everything was ready in time for dinner, and we all agreed the food was really tasty. I barely did anything. That's silly talk. With just a few ingredients, you made an amazing meal. I could never have done it, no way. You deserve all the praise in the world. I still have much to learn. Truly delicious food brings a smile to people's faces. Until I see His Highness smile in that way, I will spare no effort to improve. Well, if that's your aim, you're in luck. I've seen him shovel in your food with gusto. You must be really ambitious if you're not satisfied with that meal. I'd love for you to teach me your ways. I want to be a great cook, too. Your skills are not the problem. You merely make errors of negligence. Well, sure, I know that. But how can I stop making those errors? Pay attention. No matter how hard I try, I always seem to mess things up. The pan explodes when I cook. I forget my purse when I go shopping. That's just how life is for a scatterbrain like me. Just the other day, I was nearly laughed off the training ground for wearing mismatched shoes. My uncle used to sigh in despair when he saw me messing something up. You simply fail to pay attention to your surroundings. Ensure the pan is on the flame and that the knives are put away properly. Look at yourself in the mirror before you go out. 
to make certain you have what you need. Everyone makes mistakes, but yours should be easy enough to correct. That's all great advice. Thank you, Dadu. You really have a kind heart. At first I thought you were so stern all the time. Am I that imposing? Uh, well, a bit. Maybe if you smiled sometimes. All you have to do is lift up the corners of your mouth. Like this. See? I see. I will try it. Oh, okay, that's unsettling. Ah, tonight's meal looks exquisite. Time for me to make the most of this opportunity. Are you all right? Slow down. Your dinner is not going anywhere. <laughs> I am not sure it is your business to tell me how to consume my meal. You must admit this food is absolutely delectable. I have not eaten something this tasty in ages. Well, good. I suppose my enthusiasm is a tad overwhelming. Do you happen to know who cooked this meal? I did. You are the chef? Today? Yes. I... I do not think I have ever been brought to tears by a meal. Oh, Dudu, you are a chef without peer. Why, that was truly more delicious than anything I have eaten in all my years. I highly doubt that. No need for modesty. I could certainly never make anything even remotely so delicious. Hmm. That gives me an idea. Will you please teach me how to cook such delicacies as the one I ate just now? You want me to teach you to cook? <sighs> Indeed. I have never been so emotional over cuisine. You must teach me your ways. Very well. But only if you are serious and do not quit halfway through. I would not dream of it. Thank you, Chef Dudu. Why, Lenato? Oh, hey, Felix. I suppose your thoughts are still with Lord Lenato. I'm fine. I'm just frustrated by how little I was able to do. I know he was trying to protect me, but Lenato never really told me anything. In the end, I don't think I understood his feelings at all. You said it yourself. Be more moderate in your passions. To me, he always seemed like a knight out of a story. And I was so caught up in my ideals, I turned a blind eye to his sadness. His hatred, even when they were right in front of me. I guess I'm pretty far from real knighthood, huh? Perhaps. Yet knowing someone well does not mean you know how they feel, whether family or friend. To know someone's sorrow and turn blindly from it, that is the act of a fool. But pursuing your ideals is not foolish. But before, you said... I said to be moderate in your passions, not to abandon your ideals. It's okay to be who you are. Thank you. Hearing you say that means a lot. Ah, I almost forgot. You lent me this. Oh, the book I lent you. I'm guessing you hated it? Actually, I already knew the story. My brother used to read it to me all the time. Must have dug up some old feelings, then. I suppose. That's just what I'd expect the knight in the story to say. It's not just the way you talk, either. It's who you are as a person, deep down. <laughs> well, I think you're like the squire in the book. He's only half a knight, but he's bold and gregarious. And he always does his best. Don't stop being that half knight, okay? You got it. I'll become the kind of knight only I can be.
Felix! That was actually a good conversation. That was nice. Why do you gotta be a prick all the time? Do you know this legend, Ingrid? It's about the Battle of Fodlin's Throat. Oh, yes! I know it like the hilt of my sword. With so many valiant knights appearing in this story, I couldn't help but wonder which was your favorite. I really like this one, the one in the middle, the knight who stands in defense of the Duke. Such a wonderful knight. One of my favorites as well. That makes sense. He's so noble and virtuous. In fact, he kind of reminds me of you. I... <clears throat> Thank you. You remind me of him as well. You are honest, as is he. Uh, no, I, I'm nowhere near as great. Maybe someday. Maybe if we oh, work hard that. together, Gonfoil we put up can the finale both of Skies become knights Arcadia. as glorious as the one in this that. story. Together, I'm gonna stop. Yes. This is gonna be the last video I record well, today. I've something? recorded a lot. I've still got could. a lot to edit. I need huh? to stop and get these recorded and published. Ash, the legends are exactly that. Legends. They're not indicative of real life. Every legend holds an ounce of truth. The cards we are dealt are what they are. We can work with what we have, but we can't change what's in our hand. What's that supposed to mean? I long to serve His Highness as a knight. The sort of knight that legends are written about. But I was born bearing a crest, and with that comes responsibility. Whether I like it or not, I am the last hope of House Galatea. I am the only one who can carry on the family bloodline and restore our lost fortune. To do that means setting aside my own dreams and ambitions. You still have the right to pursue your dreams. Ash, I must ask something of you. Yes, of course. Anything. My dream is aligned with your own. Please. For both of us, promise to see yours through. That doesn't seem fair. I'll never be able to see my dream through. Doing so would mean terrible misfortune for others. So, I am bound by honor not to follow through on my own dream. But, I can help you achieve yours. Come on, this isn't like you at all. Please, don't smile when your eyes are so sad. Cyril? Um, okay. What are all these books doing on the floor? Hey, Cyril, what's going on here? I'm tidying up the library, sweeping the floors, dusting the shelves, restacking the books. Isn't there a schedule for library cleaning duty? Why are you doing all of this by yourself? Oh, I'm helping out the kid whose job it is. He says I'm making him look bad, but I'm just happy to help. Besides, some of these books are valuable. Gotta handle them carefully. Not a lot of people get that. But there are so many. You really think you'll get all this done today? Easy. There's more stuff to do tomorrow, so the library has gotta get done today. And I guess you're planning to do all that by yourself, too. Yep. Come on, it'll be dusk soon. I like Let this, kid. Nah, it's my job and I'm gonna do it. There is no way one person can shelve all these books before nightfall, Cyril. Like I said, these books need to be handled real careful. Shouldn't you be doing your own thing anyway? This is my job, and I'm gonna do it because I know Lady Rhea expects it done a certain way. I can't just stand here and watch. I won't get in your way, alright? I'll handle this shelf, and you take the next one. Listen, I said I don't need your help. I promise I'll be careful, okay? Let's just get to it. <sighs> Fine. You do over there, I'll do all of this. Got it. <sighs> don't overwork yourself, kid. Hello? Oh, hello. Have you been there long? I was absorbed in this book. Another silly legend? 
First of all, they're not silly. And second of all, no. It's an essay that speaks to uncommon and challenging battle scenarios. I've been researching such things since you proposed your unique strategy. Listen to this. Your commander gives orders that put your hometown in extreme danger. Do you carry out the orders or protect your hometown? What nonsense. I was talking about real-world tactics, not some dumb ethical question. Whatever your personal feelings on the matter, I see similarities between such tactics and these dumb ethical questions. I haven't read beyond this one, but I think the obvious answer is to follow your commander. The duty and pride of being a knight demand that you follow orders, regardless of your own feelings. But if I were put in such a position, I don't know how I'd fare. In fact, were someone to carry out those orders, I know that I'd attempt to stop them. Stop bothering with all this. You're not meant to be a knight. Go find a husband. Dude, fuck you! Excuse me? You heard me. I know you hate the ideals of chivalry and pride. So much so, you prefer to escape your duty as your family's heir. You have no right to criticize me for my ideals. Perhaps not. At least I know not to heedlessly obey orders. I know not to romanticize blind obedience. My brother taught me to think for myself. Don't you dare bring Glenn into this. You're right. Forget it. <sighs> That's a heavy sigh, again. Yeah? That's the sigh of exhaustion after spending the past month apologizing for your behavior to, well, everyone. Apologizing? <clears throat> I've been pretty darn restrained lately. If by restrained you mean falling all over yourself to garner the attention of every passing female, then... Yes, you've been quite restrained. Mark my words, the more you hurt people, the more weighty the repercussions will be. Your actions will come around to bite you. Ha! If I get bitten, that's all just part of the game. Heck, I had one girl's brother come after me with a pitchfork. <laughs> If you end up getting maimed or killed by a pitchfork, don't expect me at your funeral. Glenn used to make light of getting hurt too. Then one day, he got more than hurt. Now he's gone. She liked Glenn. I'm sorry. I was being... You're right. I know what it did to you when you died. It hurt to see you hurt and not be able to do anything when you wouldn't even come out of your room to take care of your horse? Nothing affected me the way his passing affected me. Well, I'm happy that you're better. Seeing you out and about helped me relax enough to be able to flirt with girls again. Your predictability is utterly disappointing. When I finally stopped mourning, you know what brought me back? My concern. For you. Me? You know you can't get along without me following in your shadow and caring for you. You flirt with anything that has a pulse, offend people left and right, and constantly cause commotions. Huh. The truth really does hurt. So he's a... Wow, oh, he really is a politician. Please, Sylvain. Consider your actions before you carry them out. And stop acting so nonchalant about getting hurt or killed. Promise me that. Okay, I promise. That was a nice conversation. Dimitri and Felix. Oh boy, here we go. You don't look busy. Join me for some training, Boar Prince. And here I thought you had no desire to speak with me. We don't need to speak to clash swords, do we? I suppose not. Is that one new? Wait. Where did you get such a blade? <laughs> I suppose you would recognize its value. I came upon a merchant selling weapons and found this among the rest of the steel. That pattern around the edge. There's no doubt. It was forged by Zoltan, the master swordsmith. I'm not giving it to you. 
Huh? Oh, I'm just happy to have laid eyes on it. I don't suppose you'd allow me the chance to hold it. Do you take me for a fool? I'm not letting a brute like you swing it around. As though I would be careless with something so valuable. I recall when you were nine years old, you swung a sword so hard you snapped it clean in two. Come now, that was so long ago. I'm hardly the fool I was then. <laughs> so you say. Yet House Fraldaria still told that story for years. What's wrong, Felix? <sighs> How pointless. No use talking about someone who's long dead. Looking at your face is making me angry. I'm going to find a different training partner. Farewell, your beastliness. Dude! Fuck you! What is going on with him? Seraph received the sword of Zoltan. Okay. Interesting. Oh, are you on cooking duty today, Flay? <laughs> That's unusual. Indeed, I am. I have been working away on this meal for hours now. The only thing is, each time it is my turn to tend to the meals, those in the dining hall seem to miraculously become very busy and evacuate the premises. I make the food, but nobody is ever here to eat it. I do not understand what the issue is. It is such a waste. Well, you're in luck. I've just finished training and am positively <clears throat> ravenous. If you don't mind, I'd love to sample your cooking. Really? I mean... <clears throat> yes, yes, please, have some. It is not perfect, but I am certain it will taste quite nice all the same. I'm sure it will be great. Thank you, Flane. There were a few suspiciously crunchy bits here and there, but other than that, it was fine. You... you liked it? Wow! Nobody has ever liked anything I've cooked! <sighs> if I cannot get anyone else to eat this meal, though, it is going to spoil and go to waste. <laughs> it is no secret to me that I am not very good at cooking. Say, Flane, may I have a second helping? You... you actually want... more? Of course. I wouldn't want it to go to waste after all the effort you put in. This kind of mishap can happen to anyone, you know? Don't let it get you down. Besides, I can tell you put a lot of love and dedication into preparing this food for everyone. That alone makes it taste good. <laughs> there is no need for false flattery. I speak nothing short of the truth, always. It was delicious, and I look forward to eating it again sometime. I'll agree there is no need to make enough for everyone, though. If you like, you could just cook enough for me. Hmm, perhaps. I hope you enjoy the rest of the meal. That was nice of you, Dimitri. Felix. And Sylvain. Sylvain, I want to apologize for the other day. The other day? What are you talking about, Felix? Is this a trap? You know, when I called you insatiable. Oh, that? Can't say it didn't hurt, but you have nothing to apologize for. I mean, you've said worse, Felix. Considerably worse. Come on, we've known each other since we were kids. We're not gonna let your constant verbal abuse get in the way of our friendship, are we? <laughs> no, I suppose not. Whenever I started doing something dumb, you'd yell at me about it. And whenever you drag me into something, Ingrid would find out and start lecturing us. All these years, and not much has changed, has it? But you're different, Felix. You used to be so... I don't know, carefree when we were young? Now you're the exact opposite. Well, you're not any different. Good for nothing then, good for nothing now. Wow, with fuck you! This from the guy who's always been by that good-for-nothing side. So, did you come to apologize, or to insult me? I was on my way to train and I saw you. That's all. 
you're off to train again? Now who's insatiable? Better than sitting idle like you. A little idleness would do you some good, pal. Come on, let me buy you something to eat. No. You have to choose, Felix. Our friendship or your training? My training. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Wow, you're dick. What did... Is he... Wait, Felix, I'll come train too. Wait up. Well... Sothis. Oh, is something hiding just behind that book? That ring. I have seen it before. Ah, I know. Gerald showed that ring to you beside a grave. Do you recall? He said he wished for you to have that ring one day. That means it's yours. He also said that you should gift that ring to someone special. Okay. He's in the advisor's quarters. Excuse Rhea. Me. Professor, I know how heavily I lost. Forgive me, my just know that. Right, right. I'm in this one here. Thank you all for watching. Join me next time on Fire Emblem Three Houses as I teach some students, instruct manually or automatically. I don't know what I'll do. And do the next paralogue. But until then, I am the Dark Seraph, signing off.